Hi and welcome to Replay, your chance to catch up on everything you missed this week at today's Community Church. If you want to find out more about TCC, the Community Grocery, Postcode or any of our events, you can follow us on social media, click the link below or scan the QR code. Let's get to watching the gathering. Hey, how's everybody doing? You're good? Okay, so my name is Siobhan. I'm one of the associate leaders here at today's Community Church. It is very good to see you all in this nice blue, like moody kind of light going on, pink, whatever we're going on. It's lovely to see you. So we've, I've got a very exciting, um, sort of suppose a segment for it to lead us in. Really what, what I want to bring across is here at today's Community Church as a company of believers, we believe in growing people far more than we do in growing things. You should be really glad about that. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. We are passionate about growing people way above we are growing things. And so what I want to bring to you now is in this exciting part of our journey, I wanted to put the spotlight on Live Free. Live Free is our youth ministry here at TCC. Give me a holler, give me a shout if you're here, part of Live Free. Please don't let me down, come on. <laughs> okay, great. Now, I'm going to invite some of the leaders of Live Free. Some of the men that I'm about to invite on the stage have led Live Free in over the generations. So I'm going to invite Dan Callan, who led Live Free some time ago. Then I'm going to invite Kofi. Come on, Kofi, give it a round. Give them some celebrations, some cheers as they come up. And then Ema. Okay. We are passionate about growing people way above growing things. And what happens when we grow people is we then release them into the giftings and the callings of God. And so what you're looking here is just a snapshot because there's actually, this doesn't finish with Dan. It actually has carried on. You know, if I would bend, I'd be much taller and I'd be standing here. And then you'd see somebody else standing here. Where there is a generation here. In Psalm 78, it says, we are to tell the generation of the glorious works of God. We're not to keep it to ourselves. We're to tell the generation of God's might and his wonders. And then we pass that on and we grow people and release them into the next, into their gifting and calling. So Dan, you did that with Kofi. And Kofi, you have led Live Free now for the last three years. And now the baton is about to be passed over to Ema. And Ema's going to do the same. This is a celebration of who we are and what is God is doing in our community. We are a growing community, and you should be so thankful for that, that we're growing and releasing people. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to, Dan is going to pray for Kofi. Kofi, we thank you for the seen and the unseen. Sorry. <laughs> because leading people does not happen on a stage like this. Leading people is in your ordinary life where you come and you go and you lead in such a way that you live the values of being a follower of Jesus and we're thankful for that. So Dan's going to pray for you, Kofi, and then I know you're gonna pray for Ema as we hand this baton of leadership onto the new generation. Thanks, Dan, I appreciate that. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this morning. Thank you for this special moment. And um, God, I just thank you for Kofi. I thank you for the gifts that you've given him and how he's grown over the years. Thank you for the gift of administration, for the gift of that pastoral gift, the gift of being a teacher. Thank you for all the seeds that you've sown over the years. But God, I just thank you for the gift of leadership. I thank you, Lord, that um, through your Holy Spirit, you embolden him, embolden him at the right time. You brought him through. Lord, that he has um, faithfully and sacrificially built your house and you sacrificially looked after, you, after our young people in our church. Lord Jesus, just thank you that he's known your heart. He's listened to your words, listened to your voice. And in this time, like he came, he came over, he looked after him. God, you came from that fight. I've seen how, Lord, you brought him through to put him in a leadership position. And uh, as a shepherd, you've got to stand up and fight for some things sometimes. And, Lord, he has so faithfully stood on that line and he's defended that line. And he has been your, he has been your person for the young people. Lord, 
it's all on you though. We're, we're, we're walking partnership with you. So Lord, I just thank you for all the seeds that Kofi has sown when he's felt like it and when he's not felt like it. I thank you for the pandemic and everything that he's done through that. Yes, Lord. Again, Lord, where he's had to dig deep, no one's seen it, but Lord Jesus, you've you've had him and you've had his back and lifted him up. So Lord, I just pray for all the seeds. He'll never see them. He'll never see the full extent, but Lord, you're watering them. Yes, you're Lord. bringing them through. He is, he is diligently disciples young people for so many years now yeah. un, under me, but also in his own leadership, Lord. And um, God, we commit this to you and we just yes. say, Lord, we water those even more. Yes. Lord, he's a shepherd, not just for this past season in youth, but he's a shepherd to this church. He's a yes, shepherd Lord. to this church community, whether that's seen or not seen. This is who he is. Lord, yes. I just pray for the next years of his life, the next yes, season. Lord. Lord, the time that he's given in, into building your church. Lord, would you build his build his home, build his, his marriage, build his family, build his career as he steps into teaching. Lord, we just breathe into that. And Holy Spirit, would you help him to pull closer to, 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 to Jesus Christ that you'd help him to pull forward that and that Lord you bless him with a great vision as well for, for this as he goes forward this wouldn't be just something he moves into but Lord this is something that, again that as Jesus you called him into leading youth Jesus you called him into this next season of his life so Lord we just pray that in your name oh. amen 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 Um, join with me as we pray over Emmanuel here. Look at him. Such a great guy. <laughs> Father, we thank you for Emmanuel. We thank you for um, his commitment. We thank you for his heart. We thank you for the um, dedication that he's shown time and time again. Father, we pray in your almighty name that you'll give him strength, Father, that you'll give him wisdom. We thank you that um, you allow each and every one of us to partner with you in seeing heaven on earth, Father. And I pray that as Emmanuel steps into this exciting journey in partnership with his wife, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll just allow them to see the beauty in the process of sowing, Father. And Lord, I pray that um, even though the strategy behind it, even though there's tactics that need to be used, Lord, I pray that they just do it freely with a heart and a passion to seeing young people and not just young people, but the families that they're a part of, impacted towards Christ, Father. I pray in your almighty name that as Emmanuel um, carries this joy and this um, heart towards young people into different environments, into different spaces that maybe TCC has been knocking on the door of for a while. I pray, Lord, that you'll just allow those doors to be open, Lord, and I pray that there'll be a responsiveness, Lord, in this town and the region wider, Father, we know that we are um, carrying on a legacy and that there are generations that have sown for years and years and some that we may not know by name. And we thank you for that dedication. But Father, in this moment, I just want to commit this um, time and this season that Emmanuel is going to be leading um, this youth ministry. I want to commit it to growth, Father. I want to commit it to depth, Father. I want to commit it to nutrients and soil that's so rich and full of you, Father, that even people who are resistant can't help but go, do you know what? Something's here and there's something that I want to tap into, Father. I pray for growth and I pray that you'll just keep on strengthening Emmanuel, even where it feels like a burden, even when it feels like a weight. I pray, Lord, that he gets to see the joy and the wonder of what he's about to step into. Thank you, Amen. Father. Amen. Thanks, guys. Isn't it incredible to see brotherhood represented like this? Can I ask you to stand? Because reaching the youth of today, reaching the youth of Wigan, is not going to be accomplished by these three men. It's going to be accomplished by a community that stand behind good leaders who are having their hand on God, listening to the heart of God, and saying, follow me as I follow Christ. And so what we want to do is say to him, do all that is on your heart, for we are with you. And I pray that the right team will rise up, and that every single person that it comes under that umbrella of youth, I mean, really, you know, like, not being funny, I still think I come under that umbrella, but really comes under that umbrella, that when you go into your high school, 
when you go into your neighborhood, you will sense the commissioning of God to not just tell people about Jesus, but to show Jesus in your everyday coming and going. And so I just pray, um, sort of just give a raise of your hand if you are of that youth age. If you're in high school, please just give me, just raise your hand. Nothing weird's going to happen, I promise. Just be confident. Not going to do anything wacky. Come on, you can be braver than that. And I need you to be braver than that. Because you're going to have to go into places where people don't know Jesus. And so what I want you to do is in the company of your family, raise your hand and say, I'm of that age, and we're going to pray for you. So if you are high school age, do me a favor, raise your hand right now so that we can see you, so that you can fall under this prayer. And let's pray right now as a family of believers. Lord, will you see these, will you see this youth? And Lord, I pray that they would catch a heart of who you are. I pray for Emmanuel and for the team and for a team of volunteers, for a company of people to go out into high schools, into their neighborhoods and onto their online forums and into their education. And may they carry you in such a way, Lord, that people ask, who is it that you're following? Because it's not culture, because it's not trend. There is something different about you. You're carrying something different. There is a joy about you. There is a peace about you. There is a boldness about you. There is a confidence about you. And you can point them to the living God. And so we pray for you. We pray for wisdom for you. We pray for favor for you. We pray for abundance for you. We pray for blessing for you, resource, equipment, whatever you need. May you steward well what is in your hands that God sends you in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Be blessed. Thanks, guys. We appreciate that. Okay. Uh, it's great to see so many of you uh, looking fresh from your holidays. It's September. Reality check. Um, actually, it's more of a question um, for you. I find myself at this time of year assessing everything in my life again and taking stock again. I don't know if that's because now like I have a child that goes to school, so I'm back on like the academic calendar. I don't know if for you, like you're approaching the end of the, like the, it's coming to the end, like, you know, the, the last quarter of the year is what I'm trying to say. Um, but I find this autumn, like the shift of, as a bit of a time of assessing things. One of those things, not dead important to be honest, being like, you know, it's coming into autumn, like what kind of food am I gonna eat in autumn? I run a lot of my life, guys, around what's fresh at the minute, what I'm going to cook. You know, it's a bit trivial. I was in my house yesterday. I'm like, my house needs to smell now more like autumn. Anyone else? It's like it, smel it smelled pretty summery. We've had a bit of coconut line going on. We've got to shift more into the amber, the fig. We've got to move into that, right? No, just me. So important. I know you came here just to hear me say that this morning, right? But... So, so I do it in the small things, right? I'm, tr I'm trying to make small shifts. But I think, like, for me, this is a time where I'm always kind of assessing. Coming to the end of the year, right, some of the goals I've set, or I'm just kind of thinking, wow, it's nearly Christmas, like, whatever it is, taking a little bit of stock. And so a lot of what I want to share this morning has kind of come from that. Um, we're in a new season, a new series, sorry, is talking about the unforced rhythms and grace. And I'm going to be teaching this morning, as Siobhan Taylor did last week, amazing if you didn't hear it and you weren't here, listen to the podcast, Matthew chapter 11. And it's the end of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. And it's Jesus talking to his disciples, talking to a group of people, and basically saying, are you fed up with religion? Are you tired? Do you need a rest? Like, I've just come back from holiday, but I'm not going to lie. Like, two weeks later, I'm like, I'm ready for my next holiday again. Anyone else? Just me? Um, it's like, are you fed up, like, with this churning of life over and over? And what Jesus says is, and I'll read it to you in a minute, come to me and I will give you rest. The thing is, quite often we think, like, more self-care, more boundaries, more holidays, they're all great, but we think they're going to be the thing that give us the rest that we need. Now, as a person of faith, and I'm not assuming that everyone in here is, although many of you are, I'm taking my cue from Jesus, right? So yes, I like self-care. Yes, I need more sleep. Like all of those things, we've got to put good wisdom into practice or knowledge into practice, which is good wisdom. But actually where we find true rest and a flow of life and a grace to life is when we put Jesus first. And here's the thing. This is kind of what I'm going to be talking about, friendship. 
But the, the preface of everything I'm going to say today hangs on this. The best foundation you can build your life on is being a friend of Jesus. Now, if, if you've been a person of faith a long time, you're like, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean by that. So often we fall into a trap of just thinking that Jesus is just a part of our life or we're just living for him. Can I tell you, there is something so precious about that thought of being a friend of Jesus. Like actually to know him, to laugh with him, to speak with him, to let him in our day, to, to be in conversation by the power of the Holy Spirit, by speaking in prayer, just having a back and forth conversation with God. And I felt myself challenged on this recently is like, I can be so fixed on doing and get everything done. I'm feeling exhausted and feeling tired. It's like, well, I've stepped away from that place where I'm just being a friend of Jesus. And I'm proud to say like, that's something I want to pursue for the rest of my life. Okay, I'm, I'm 33, I'm nearly 34. I'm hoping I've got more years in me, but who knows? That was really depressing. I didn't mean it to come across like, I did not mean it to come across like that. I was like, well, okay. Anyway, who knows what's going to happen? We don't know. But I hope for the rest of my lifetime that I am on earth, that I love Jesus more as time goes on, that I'm, I'm more loving life as time goes on. Because generally, as we get older, and I've found this, we become a bit more cynical. We've seen things happen. We, we hurt. We deal with grief. So naturally, the shine gets taken off life a little bit things take their toll on us. I want to be more of a friend of Jesus as time goes on than I was, you know, when I was 20, when I'm 30, then hopefully I'll be 40, 50, 60, etc. That, that is my prayer. And so that's the passion I speak to you with today, because when we inform our lives on that foundation, it helps us to find the right friendships, the right relationships in others. And that is such a key because so much of our life is run around friendships and relationships. When you think about the thing that is an, an energy source to you or an energy drainer, usually it is in the form of a person. Um, so it may be your spouse or your friend or your colleague or your kids, I don't know. Quite often we get energy in life and we feel energized and refreshed by other people. Also, we can feel drained by them. And I want to say that as we put Jesus first, and I'm going to read the scripture to you in just a moment, and we, as we go to him and we're restored and we prioritize our friendship with Jesus, we're able to better prioritize everything else in our life, including our friendships. Um, and so I'm going to read to you from Matthew 11. It's verse 28 to 30. And I'm reading from a version called the message version. It's a bit more poetic. I'm going to read to you straight after in a different version. I'm a words person, so I find it helpful to hear things said about five different ways before it sinks in, right? I, I like the nuance of it, so bear with me. You're coming with me on a word journey today. The message. Thanks for that, Emmanuel. <laughs> He's just sniggering at me on the front row. That's, that's fine, Emmanuel, whatever. New live free leader, go for it. Um, <laughs> Listen, guys, he's my brother-in-law. We can, we can have this kind of conversation. Anyway, back to the Word of God. Matthew chapter 11. This is the words of Jesus speaking. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Learn how I do it or watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I could do with more of that. <laughs> I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Different version, same scripture says this. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. I'll come back to that one. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Now, a yoke, a yoke, and I don't know, you forgive me, like my agricultural knowledge is pretty much zero. But in the Old Testament, agriculture was one of the main sources of income. So this would made sense to Jesus' hearers. A yoke is something that is put on an animal to bear the weight that it needs to carry, right? It helps balance it out. Sometimes animals are put together with a yoke set over the top so they can travel, carry the weight in an even direction, right? So what Jesus is not saying is, Life is easy. You will not be disappointed. Like, there's, you know, we take as like a rhythms of grace as a way of just feeling like, God, if it's hard, it mustn't be from you. Like, no, 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 no. Like, life is tough, right? We, we know sometimes life is really tough. 
But what Jesus is saying is when you take my burden upon you, basically when you follow me and when you stick close to me, it's not a weight that you're going to bear alone. It's a yoke that I'm going to give you because if you think about it, there are many different types of yokes we can put on, different burdens, different stresses, different things we have to handle. When we try to handle them alone, sometimes they do become too heavy of a weight for us to bear. But Jesus says, when you take this upon me and when you return to my friendship, basically there's a rhythm to it. There's a grace to it. Does it mean you won't have moments where you you're arrested, you're you're in grief, you're in a difficult time. No, it doesn't. But what it means is you're not alone in that time. And in those moments, we, we also need friendships with each other. We need the right kinds of friendships in our life that have a grace to them to help us go through life. Honestly, if you are a kind of person that thinks you don't need friends, you may be not trying hard at anything in life, just being completely savage, because the minute you step out and try to do something in faith or do something difficult, or you're going through a tough time, we need the right kind of people around us to back us, to love us, maybe to pray with us. Whatever it is, we need those people there. As we get older, sometimes we think, I've no need for new friends now. I, you know, maybe you've lived in the same place for 20 years. I've had the same friends for 20 odd years. There's no shift. Like, I want to encourage you, friendships are a gift. Relationships with one another are a gift, but we've got to figure out which are the ones that we're going to flow with and which are the ones that are going to hold us back. And I'm just trying to say, when we put Jesus first, it helps us to order our priorities. It helps us to see, take a real rest, not just a break or a holiday, but a soul rest, as the New Living Translation says. It's like a rest for your soul. We also begin to see, okay, who are the people on this journey that I can grow with? Now, we're all going to have different types of friends. Not all of our friendships are going to look exactly the same, and neither should they, right? But I'm talking about the people that you speak most to, that you allow to speak most into your life, that you spend the most time with, you want to be making sure that they are traveling in the same direction as you. Otherwise, another scripture talks, talks about being unequally yoked. I wasn't going to say this, but it's coming out now, whatever. Um, and it talks about an, an unequal yoke would be a yoke that sits over two animals, and, and the animals are of a different height or a different shape. If that happened, just you know, at a science level, they're going to keep going around in a circle because one's going to pull harder than the other. They're going to be pulling against each other. They're either not going to go anywhere or they're going to go around in a circle. But in our friendships, we want to make sure that we're actually growing with people and walking with people into this next season. If you're a person of faith and you want to go in the right direction, who are going to add to you and who you can add to, this is not perfection. This is not that you will never fall out, never have a crossword, never annoy each other. But there is a sense of traveling in the same direction, that there is a rhythm of grace to it. And, and quite often that God blesses, you know, I found in a lot of people from, from the moment I was born to this point now, the people that have been in my life, different seasons and some that have been there for that whole time, they've been blessed by God. Not just to me, but hopefully I've blessed them as well. I've got a question for you, and then I'm going to give you a couple of practical things. Again, if you're a person of faith, I, I just want you to ask of, of the key, the close relationships in your life. Okay, we're always going to have different levels of friendship. We're going to have different friends. We're going to have acquaintances. That's fine. With the close friendships in your life, is this friendship taking me closer to Jesus or further away from him? And I'm, I'm not talking in this way of like, well, that doesn't serve me anymore, so bye. You know this, like, do you not think people have this attitude at the minute, like, you don't serve me anymore, so see ya. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the message of Jesus, right? And the, the, but there's a sense of truth in it, is that sometimes we spend so much time, like, just in relationships out of loyalty, that we never question, like, is this actually healthy? Is there a sense of health to this? Is there a sense of growth to this? So I'm not talking about binning people off, but what I'm asking is, over a period of time, over the long haul, because of this person or because of this friendship, are they helping me and are they encouraging me to move closer towards Jesus or really am I in a neutral place or am I actually moving further away? Because if you have centered your life on Christ, then part of our joy actually is to spend our lives being a friend of Jesus. Yes, doing the things he's asked us to do and going on that adventure, highs, lows, 
But we want people who are actually going to say, yeah, I'm with you in that journey. I'm not pulling the other way, or I'm not just standing still, or I'm not getting offended because you're making choices I don't like. But I, I'm with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be alongside you in it. It's a tough question. It's a tough question when you look at your close friendships, your closest relationships. Is this person taking me closer to Jesus or further away? And I just want to highlight a couple of warning signs. Is that all right? I've seen these in myself, so, so I think that's why I can do it. Um, what, what really we want as people of faith, if we're going to grow, if we're going to fulfill the things God has for us, if we're going to live lightly, you know, we talk about the scripture like live in a sense of grace and priority. After putting Jesus first is this, we don't just want friends who are friends to who we were, but to who we're becoming. You, we all need, right, we all need friends now, don't we, right? No? Anyone? I do. Like, you need a friend who's friend to you now, like, in the things that you're not good at, the things that are a bit ugly if you show them. Um, total side note, I was talking to one of my friends backstage before about vulnerability hangovers. Does anybody get this? <laughs> no? Okay, I'm just going to tell it to you now, otherwise you're going to think I'm weird. I... I feel like I'm really, really open with, especially, you know, those people who just eyeball you and it's like you start telling them things and you're like, why am I telling you this? Because I feel like you're unwrapping me. Why? Because I didn't want you to, but now I've told you. And then the next day I'm just like, why did I tell them that? Why do they know that? And I'm like, once the words are out there, you can't retract them, can you? And I'm not, I'm not talking about even, I'm not even talking about over, like, oversharing. I'm just talking about like, why well, I just literally bared my soul to you. I didn't want to. Why did you make me do that? Um, I don't know why I'm saying that. But anyway, I get vulnerability hangovers all the time, right? But what I, would find, what I would say is a lot of people who bring that out in me, quite often it's because they're a friend to my future more than just a friend to who I am now today. And they see who I am now and today and they're like, I love you for who you are now and today. And I loved you for who you were back then, you know, and perhaps if they've known me back then. And I loved you through it. But actually what I love more is the work that God is doing in and through you and who he's shaping you to be. And so I'm going to be there, not just as a friend as your, to your present, where it makes me feel comfortable and you're not really stepping out and doing anything, and where I feel secure, but I'm going to be a friend to your future. We all need those friends. And we need... I would dare to say at least one person in our lives who is a friend to our future. If we spend the majority of our time with people who, yes, love us, are great fun, etc., etc., but they're not seeing who God is shaping us to be and encouraging that and kind of like, you know, if you think about a piece of stone, chiseling that out of us and helping us with that, if we don't have that, it's easy for us to stay where we are. It's easy for us to be comfortable and just to to remain kind of in a holding pattern. Whereas when we find those people, they're not, again, they're not perfect people. They're not going to get everything right. They may just be in your, your life for a season, right? But they're, they're a friend to your future. So we need friends to our present, but we also need friends who are going to offer honest course correction. This is what I'm going to start calling it from now on. Honest course correction. My husband loves to course correct me. But, like, he's my friend, right? So it's okay. But on Friday night, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have a vulnerability hangover. I can feel it coming. Ah, word vomit. Um, we were having a conversation, and honestly, like, in, in, the, in the kindest way possible, he gave me some honest course correction. And I wanted to interrupt him because I, I didn't really want to hear what he had to say. But after I stopped interrupting, which took me a while, because, you know, I sometimes just need to learn to stop this, I was like, he, he's a friend to my future right? He's a friend to my future. And so I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to heed his words, even if it's difficult, actually, sometimes. But he's not just loving me for me now. He's loving me for who I'm becoming. And he's seeing who I'm becoming. And I'm not saying that only happens in a spousal relationship because it doesn't. This happens in the people that God puts around us, around us and blesses us with. And there is a sense of being cut almost into our future and walking into our future. So a warning sign is when people are only friends to your past or your present and they're not friends to who you're becoming, warning sign. Second one, second warning sign, when loyalty becomes the only driver of your friendship. I, I Just so you know, context, I'm a fiercely loyal person, right? 
I'm really loyal, not to brands or anything. You know, people talk about brand, like, I am not loyal to brands at all. Because if a brand does, you know, if somebody doesn't deliver my thing on time, I'm like, whatever, guys, move on. I'm moving to my new brand, right? Yeah, so, someone, someone feels me there. Someone's like, yeah. But people, I'm fiercely loyal to people. I love people. I love the idea of family. I love the idea of friends being like family and the, the gifts that people, I think, have given to me in my life over years. I am so grateful for that I'm just a fiercely loyal person. But there is a problem when loyalty becomes the only driver for those close friendships. Because sometimes you're trying to move forwards, there's a shift happening in you, and maybe, again, if you're a person of faith, God's doing something in you and trying to move you forwards, and actually that relationship shouldn't be as at the forefront as it still is. God needs you to move, or there's a shift happening, and out of loyalty, you can't move from that friendship. You have to question in those times, is your loyalty actually to your friend Jesus or is it more to that person? Because that's what it becomes in the end. I want to explain to you how, well, I actually, I don't need to explain to you how strong loyalty is. And we sometimes think if we are, the opposite of loyalty is disloyalty, isn't it? So I'm not talking about being disloyal. What I'm saying is sometimes we value loyalty over obedience and even over stepping into the thing that God's asked us to do with the people he's asked us to do it with to the point where it could hold us back. And I know they are hard words to hear because probably you are a loyal person like me. But we often think that to be loyal, we have to dishonor. To be loyal, we still honor people, right? I'm going to give you probably the best example I know from Scripture. The friendship of Jonathan and David in the Old Testament. I'm going to give you a headline because I don't have time to read it all to you. This was a relationship between King David and Jonathan. At the time, Jonathan was, well, he, he's always been the, the son of King Saul. But the king, Saul, had a son called Jonathan. And Jonathan and David had a really special friendship, really special. Now, it came to a point where King Saul was going against the things that God had asked him to do. He was being disobedient, right? He was turning from the things God had asked him to do. And even Jonathan, who was Saul's son, because he cared more about his loyalty to God, Jonathan, he chose to stick with David and do what was right, even over the blood relationship with his dad. It, it stuns me every time, because I believe family is a gift. I believe friends are a gift. But what should never, ever come in the way between our relationship with Jesus, if we're following him and he's our first and our best, is loyalty to someone else. And sometimes there has to be a shift where we say, not that I'm disowning that person, I'm going to dishonor them. No, I'm going to honor them because that's exactly what Jonathan did. He honored Saul. David, who was trying to be murdered by Saul, probably on three occasions, still honored him. When he died, he wept. He tore his clothes, right? Read the story. It's in Kings or Chronicles. We'll, we'll find it. You know, we'll, we'll find that one for you. It's in the Old Testament. Some, something happened within Jonathan that he realized, actually, my, my loyalty to God, my love for God and his ways is, more, is even more right now. Not than, I'm not going to dishonor my father, but I've got to do the right thing and I've got to cling to David in this season, and that's what it was. And I just kind of want to say it's the hard thing to say. Our friendships can either add power to us in our journey moving forward or they can drain us. At worst, you know, they can drain us, but at worst, they can stand us still. And, and we sometimes don't recognize the power of our influence, the influence of people around us. Maybe we think we're a really strong person or we've got a big personality. We are all shaped by our environment. We are all impacted by the words, the actions, uh, the kindness, the hurt of others. And it's not that life is perfect, but we want to position ourselves with friends who are a friend to our future. Not that the main driver of our relationship is loyalty. Oh, I've been friends with them for 20 years. I've been friends with them for 30 years. So to just take a backward step or just to focus more on this is going to destroy our friendship. Not necessarily, but it's the hard thing to do. It is the hard thing to do. And I think not for everyone, but for some of us, that's, that's what we've got to face now, right? There are some of us that are like assessing our friendships and as we go through those super close friendships in our head, we're saying, this, this is actually hindering me from being a friend of Jesus. 
this is hindering me from walking forwards. For some of us, it's just like we're taking stock and we're saying, thank you, God, for the people you've put in my life. Let me love them more. Please help me to be a friend to their future, not just to their past and their present. Because we can't think about this in the light of everyone else and not put the mirror on ourselves and say, am I being a friend to their future? Or am I just more comfortable with their past or their present? Quick story, and then we're, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you to stand a minute. We're going to pray. Um, we were sat around our dinner table a few weeks ago and having a conversation with some people who were there. And we can't, I can't remember how we got onto this, but they basically kind of embarrassed, in an embarrassing way, said that, that they, might, they were a bit embarrassed to say it, but basically they pray about friendships. So I was like, I feel seen, me too. I think they thought we were going to laugh. It was like, no. We pray as people of faith about so many things in life, don't we? The important things of life, the small things of life, because we believe God cares about every detail. God cares about your relationships and your friendships. And in a minute, a minute that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray about our friendships. For, you know, for those of you who there's a shift and it's what I've been speaking about, you've got to find or God has got to give you or provide you people who are friends to your future whether it's just a moment to take stock and say, thank you, God, that you've given me these people. Let me honor them more. Let me celebrate them more. Let me be a friend to their future. Whatever it is, we're going to pray about it. And I just ask you, while we've got a minute, please just stand if you're able to stand. We're just going to have a point of reflection. And I'm going to pray just that God would, you know, relationships and friendships are so, they're so key to our direction in life. It matters so much to like what we will do, what we'll say yes to, what we'll say no to, what we hear, our vision, our dream, like everything. And there's such a gift, but at times we've got to recognize there's a change of season. Sometimes there's a shift in season and God is moving something and we've got to be bold enough sometimes to make a move or to stand firm or to be the friend that's going to step up and be a friend to a future. So let me pray and I encourage you, if you're a person of faith, just pray with me. Father, I thank you for this community. God, I thank you for the gift of friendship. I thank you for the blessing of just communion with one another. God, we love communion with you. We, we talked about the, that this morning. We're talking about being your friend, but God, you've given us each other as well. You've not destined us to be lonely. And God, so for those, God, who now just feel lonely, God, would you just meet them where they are? And more than that, God, would you give them friendships? My mum always said, to, be, to, to have friends, you've got to be a friend. It's so true. God, but for in our effort, God, would you just add work of the Holy Spirit to that, God? The people that you've placed in our lives that maybe we've just not even recognized. Maybe we've not seen how good they've been to us. Maybe we've not seen that they've reached out to us. God, would you help us to take a step towards them? Father, for those of us where maybe our friendships are in a bit of disarray and we feel stuck, Maybe we feel our friendships are actually holding us back from some of the things you're asking us to step into. God, will you help us? God, would you give us clarity? God, would you help us to be those who honor and don't dishonor? Lord, your word talks so much and displays so much of honoring one another. God, where difficult conversations have got to happen, where there's got to be a movement, Father, would it be based in your truth? Would it be based in your trajectory? God, would it not be out of just moving on from people, God, who we think don't serve us anymore? God, give us wisdom. Help us to grow up. If we're people of faith, help us to grow up in the faith and in your word. God, and for those of us who feel just overwhelmed with joy today, God, at the people you've placed in our lives, God, at the lengths they've gone to, uh, to for us, God, for the fact that they see us as you see us that they see us as the work that you're crafting and they add to that work, that they come along with their chisel and sometimes knock an edge off us and it hurts or sometimes they just stand next to us and they stand with us through the good, the bad and the ugly. God, we thank you for them. And Father, as we just pray about these friendships, God, we, I, I, you know, we're going to have an opportunity. We, to be your friend, actually, God, is, is the greatest gift. To know you, when we know you, God, it, it's to love you. To know you is literally to love you. To know who you truly are. 
to know what you've done for us, to know that you sent your son as the ransom for our brokenness, for our sin. Not just that Jesus would die, but he would get the keys, as it says in scripture, the keys to the kingdom and the keys of hell and disregard them and say, God, now you can be free because a way has been made. Jesus, I thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. You're not a lifestyle. You are the life. You are our life. And Father, I pray today, God, if there are people in this room, and I encourage you, in this moment, you know, God can meet you anywhere, at any time, any place. He doesn't need a band. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need my voice. He loves you. He is all-powerful, all-seeing, and all-knowing. But there is a moment now where we, you have an opportunity if you want to be a friend of Jesus. It might sound like the craziest thing, but if you want to know not just a Savior, but a Lord who loves you, who you can serve, who has set you free, who has quite literally done it all for you, then we're going to have a moment. And in a minute, I'm going to pray. And if, the, if that's you and you're like, yeah, that's me, I'm going to ask you, while people's heads are bound and kind of why we've just got a reflective moment, just to pop your hand up and put it back down. And all you're doing in that is giving a physical response and saying, no, I, I want to know this Jesus that you speak about. Not sure about everything else, or maybe you've not got everything figured out, but there's a sense where you just put your hand up and say, God, I, I want to know you. I'm saying yes to that invitation Siobhan spoke last week. God puts us with an invitation and we can either accept it or decline it. If you want to accept that invitation, when I've prayed, I want you to just pop your hand up and put it back down. And then we're going to celebrate. So Father, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of overwhelmed that we get to be your friend. Unlike our earthly relationships, God, you love us in every season of our life. God, it's not that you love us more as time goes on. You've always loved us. You've always been with us. You always back us. Thank you, God. I thank you that you are the greatest friend we could have, God. And I pray in this moment for anyone who doesn't know you and they want to accept that invitation and say, God, actually, I want to know a friend like this. I want to know a love like this, God, that you would meet them where they are. God, that they don't have to change the way they look, the way they dress, their past, God, anything. They just come as they are. God, and I thank you that you love them as they were, as they are, and as they will be. God, and it's that love that transforms us, that it saves us from our sin, from our brokenness. God, that it restores us. God, I pray for every person, would you just create a divine exchange? God, take their brokenness and God, give them life. Literally your life, Holy Spirit, I pray. Meet them where they are in your name. Lord, um, if you made that decision, would you be bold enough just to pop your hand up and put it back down? And if you've not, you know what, that's fine. I, just to be a friend of Jesus is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and he gives us an amazing purpose and all of that. But just to know him is actually the greatest thing. Is there anyone this morning you're saying that, I'm responding to that. That invitation is mine, I'm having it. Amazing. Best decision, best decision. Father, will you bless these people that have responded to you this morning? God, whether they put their hand up as I've seen or they didn't. God, I thank you, God. This is your work. This is your work. Only you can save us. Only you are worthy of our praise and our worship. And I pray you would meet them. God, would you transform them from the inside out? Bless them, Lord. Give them a sense of your Holy Spirit. Help them to know you. Help them to find friends on earth as well as your friendship. In your name, Lord. Amen. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out anything more about faith, Jesus, or our community, please reach out. Our team will be happy to help. You can DM us on social media or you can email us on info at tcclife.com. I'll see you next week. Bye.